since I have first-hand experience of how Oliver Stone has been operating. I thought I'd discuss, um, also in light of the studies I've done in history, this particular book comes from 1946, 1947, the study of film. I've commented on Oliver Stone's JFK. I was given the last word in the debate that ran for 10 years since an East Film Quarterly, a magazine of such prestige and lands on the desk of every director in the world. I'm not trying to exaggerate my um, experience or credit, but I don't want to obscure the idea that I have not um, done my homework. Um, I have worked very hard on this topic. <clears throat> I had an imaginary talk to my sister trying to explain to her how Wispansky would operate. I was asking her if she ever had the experience in the environment that she was in of seeing things on cars and buses that seemed to tally up into a message, playing off the subconscious and told herself, wow, I'm really reading into this. The truth is that Wispensky worked from the 1920s on with the most deranged cinema masters and helping the oligarchy encrypt our environment to trigger subliminal mind control and make us feel that we are in an environment sometimes that is deeply effective of our occult ideas. Well, it's a safe presumption that people will put off that kind of psychology. And I don't necessarily blame anyone. I certainly don't engross myself in such things. But I've seen Oliver Stone's director's cut of JFK, which was much louder in the way that he reads the way that the um, Neva Corporation operated, indirectly reads it. In other words, what you can see he is doing and understands from the director's cut applies directly to also what they are doing. And I suspect he had a hand in the script of Gail Burst, and he's one of the laughing, masked heisters who got in on the piece of the action that the Kennedy snuff film afforded, full knowingly that he was helping the assassins and covering for them. He has, for example, a scene in a uh, bathroom where Jim Garrison goes into and has people pursue him into the bathroom and come out zippering up to make it with photographers to make it look like he was homosexually um, conniving in the bathroom. And this is a very intimate um, Neva Corporation Confederate strategy to humiliate someone who's engaged in investigations. Even in the film that was released to the public at large, there's a scene where um, an inter interrogator for the defense of Clay Shaw says, we have a, a, a man here who's a junkie who's been a criminal all his career and now wants to be taken at his word. And you're supposed to sympathize with him. So Stone knows how to go about using character assassinations to bring sympathy for the person being assassinated, as well as shed 
a dishonor on the idea of questioning somebody's genuine standing. Now, the police have allowed themselves to ignore that Terry Visco and Andrea Swimmer were under contract to the Neva Corporation's paid actors and actresses. That the kidnappers hustled me to places like Climax One, where for once in a million years, they were, I mean, they were smuggling me into movie theaters as a hostage in, in coma. For once in a million years, I was not allowed into the establishment. Not that I wanted to go in. They told me to sit out in the waiting room. I sat there panic stricken, not wanting to go in for a really long time. The way they leave me in the back seat of cars when they kidnap me over state lines. State police even stopped the car, smelled the fumes, and ignored that I was there when I was obviously in trauma and trouble and a child. I was up against all of this. I was up against an administration that sent me to the governor's school and then smuggled me back and arrested me for armed robbery. An act associated with Edelstein and the migrants, as well as Scott Ryback, the Jewish community on high who had implanted a nerve agent and were stealing from the museums. Of course, I hadn't done anything like that, needless to say, but they want me to say, and then all of the stone pounces, well, if you said it, that undermines your credibility. This is the sophistication of his mind. If the letters themselves say, oh, nobody would ever believe a woman. And this is attorneys for violent human traffickers. Now, Mancini and Osler told me the story. They tied up Terry Visco and probed her with a carrot. Saul Brecker learned me the term pork in and time for Jaime Carbonell and Andrew Swimmer to work with Peter Schoen, lifting it for Brian Eno and Vladimir Putin. But I knew that they had said we, they were just having fun. And I knew that they, she continued to go out dating with them. And I had no basis for anything other than they used to use Roach for a kid who was taunting a man in a wheelchair around the reservoir. You little Roach, I'm going to throw you in the reservoir, the guy said, supposedly. So Roach, sisters, Terry Roach, she was laughing. The only time I ever saw Terry Visco was when I was in trauma in hostage. She was sitting on a milk crate laughing. So I knew there were women who were older than me from places like Climax One who were being paid to do things with these men. I had no evidence otherwise, and I was in terrible trauma from the things they showed me from Soldiers of Fortune and so on. Austro breaking my sister's ribs. Melons, who had the only person I knew who had the Richard Harris record with the song The Hive, other than Austro, used to say, I'll file that. And had a picture on his, uh, his door of a man with a newspaper over his face and it says, Neurotransmitters take a holiday. Well, the truth is, I had no idea what to do. She didn't seem to be avoiding them. And they told me they were just having fun. So they had set up a perplex. What is true for you is true for her. And this is their mirror operation from the Neva Corporation. Terry Visco, uh, to my knowledge, never ended up deaf, but the people from the Visco family had deaf people. So they were working this shrewd, complicated knot of overpopulation pleas and making a plea bargain about all this. Now, she was, it seemed to me, a hired agent who was performing that role. I did not see them do it. It may not have even happened. I was never able to verify. I never came in contact with her again, but I'm aware that she went out dating because Martin Mancini took her to selling by the pound with my tickets after I was told this story. So I don't know. I believe Terry Visco was hired by Peter Gabriel and the Neva Corporation and the Ono clan in Warhol 
to surgically implant that linguistic so that it was subconscious so that they could trigger it as Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. What's up, Doc? Uh, 